That has got to be the biggest question I see. Why do you pull this rope out before you shut your saw off? Very simple, and it's a way that's going to save your starter and other components. In simple terms, what happens is when you shut the saw off on a chainsaw, high compression ones, or ones with good compression, it comes up to the top of the compression stroke, but there's not enough to overcome it. So it goes backwards. And what happens when it goes backwards, the dogs inside, the starter paws on the inside, right here, that will catch on to your starter. Alright, it'll catch on to it. And what it can do, if it's when it rotates backwards, it catches on and it wants to pull that rope and the assembly back in because of that reverse action. Well, what can happen? You can go as far as breaking your paws, breaking your dog, breaking your rope, which would be a nice convenience compared to breaking your starter assembly. And I've seen where these starter assemblies bust off and fly across the yard. Handle, I personally had one where the saw died on me and it broke the handle, the rope, and it shot it across the yard. This is not a Super Pro 125C, this is a CP 125. So this is a high compression chainsaw. And this is one that I redid. So, you don't want that to happen. That is why it is a good habit to go and pull this rope, shut off, and it's going to become the give that you want for this to happen. And then, just let it go back in. But it's not limited to just these large chainsaws. No. Your Pro Max 6. Your Pro Max 6 is here. Oh, I'm sorry. Power Mac. Just got up not too long ago. Power Mac 6. The PM6 is also one that you want to do this to. And why is that? It has the same effect that can happen to it. But the little recoil setup inside these is made of a plastic that isn't the greatest and now they've got age on them so when you shut that saw off it too can reverse grab the starter and snap the center I've seen countless ones of these have that happen and I've personally had to replace one that it happened to I was tuning the saw and it backfired on itself and went backwards and it snapped it so it wasn't the exact same situation but it breaks it so there's no give in the system and you got to provide that give for it. Now, I'll read a little thing here. There's also, from McCullough themselves, a service bulletin on exactly this. Model, all models. McCullough McCullough Corporation Service Bulletin 1558. Model, all. Subject, recommended engine stopping procedure. When the ignition is shut off, it is normal for the flywheel of a small engine to suddenly reverse its direction of rotation just before it stops. As this happens, it is possible for the starter rope to be pulled too tight around the drum, which can result in damage to the starter assembly. Professional chainsaw users around the world have developed a simple method to avoid this possible damage. We recommend that you advise your customers of the following, the dealer to the customers. Place the saw on a firm surface. One, place the saw on a firm surface and release the throttle so the engine idles and the chain stops moving. Two, slowly pull the starter cord out a few inches or centimeters, depending on, you know, what system you measure on. So pull it out and then move the ignition switch to off. All right, while you're still holding, move it to off. Note the flywheel will still reverse suddenly, but holding the cord out will greatly extend the service life of the starter assembly because you become the give. When the engine stops, ease the starter cord back into the rewind position. Don't do that, just do that. And there's a few figures right here on it. There's the Mini Mac. And then there's the Pro, there's the 10 series, there's the, you know, the uh, 250 series kind of ones. So it looks like a Super 250 in that one right there. 
Um, they have all of it, what to do. So I can see. So get a visual of what to do. This is, like I say, one of the most common questions I see people asking, why do you do this? So I don't think I could get really a better example than McCullough themselves. And this isn't just limited to McCullough. This is also other brands of salts that do this and whatnot. I'm not super familiar on all of them, but this is a good habit to learn. And after you do this enough times, and it doesn't take long, it's just a thing. And I know in a few videos I haven't done it, you've seen, but I was holding the camera in some of them. So it's kind of a risk. And you do this for not just left side starters, but also right side starts such as the second style of gear drives you do it with. The first style have a spring on the inside of them, like model 7377. They have a, an anti-kickback spring inside of them. So when you're starting that saw, if it kicks back, that spring takes the give out. When you shut it off, it also takes the spring out. So you don't have to pull out on those ones, despite it's the same design. So. I figured I would make just, you know, a quick little video telling people why do you do this. And as an example, I will fire up one of the saws somewhere, probably the big one here, the CP125. Fire it up and show you what kind it, what it wants to do when going in and everything. So, and this one right here, you can hold this one and it's it's got so much compression. It's probably got the most of all of my saws, you will not turn this one over without using the decompression. Just one of those things. If you got a decompression, use it. You're not just, you know, just because you can pull it over, that's great, but you got to think of the starter components on the inside, the stress that they're taking too. So that's why the decompression is there to help the user and help the longevity of the life of your starter and starter components. So. Without further ado, let us go ahead and let's see if we can start this one up. It's cold outside. It's like 15 out right now. So get her started, warmed up, and we'll go ahead and show that example to you guys of what I'm talking about. right back in on me. That is why we pull that out, that give. When I say this is a high compression chainsaw, I'm not lying to you guys. I'm off. That's how much compression this has. She's heavy. You notice how it's barely wanting to drop. So. Pull your rope out, guys. Just wanna thank you all for watching. Super Pro, no, not a Super Pro, CP125. This thing is a monster, 123cc. I did a whole rebuild series on this. You're going to have to go back two years to watch that series on this one. I'll put a video link in the bottom of the first video, and you can watch just like 9 or 12 videos on this from start to finish of running. This thing has so much compression, I have to have the idle elevated just for it to fight it. And if I turn the decompression lever, if I turn it off, it'll actually idle smooth. And this thing will run and cut. So that's why the chain spins a little bit, just to keep it running. So, Alright, I'm going to say thanks for watching.